Cat family, once again, I'm Keith Reed, the supervisor for Work Readiness Instruction here at our FedCap We Care office, Grand Concourse, Bronx, New York City. And again, we're back again with the series on Financial Friday. And today I, I want to have more of a conversation than perhaps some of the other episodes that you viewed prior. Oftentimes people have concerns about investing. Actually, the word is fear. They have a fear of investing their money. And sometimes they have that fear simply because they don't have a lot of money. And I understand that. But investing can be relatively problem free and there's no reason to be to have fear. In fact, I think you should be fearless, not fearful. Right? And one way to get over your fear is to look at some simple ways of investing in mutual funds. We've been talking about that for several weeks now. Why? We've been talking about it because I've come across so many of you who have been in the classrooms who some have not heard of mutual funds. And some of you are like I was as a young kid growing up in New Jersey, where the first time I was introduced to saving at all was at the traditional savings and loan bank. And you would come to school with your little nickels and dimes and quarters, you put them in a little envelope, some of you remember, and you give them to the teacher, who give them to the principal, and they would turn them over to the bank, and there would be an account open in trust for you with your parents. But one of the things that was missing as I became a grown man and, and worked in the financial sector, I come to realize that one component of in saving and investing that was left out of that process, not only for me, but I found out from many of you in the classroom, is that you could have invested in other types of vehicles. For example, a mutual fund or a money market mutual fund, right? And because we lack information and we lack that knowledge, hence the fear of investing in something you're just simply not familiar with. Just think of it for a moment. You're very familiar with certificates of deposit, CDs. You're very familiar with a savings account. You're very familiar with a checking account. And none of us have a problem opening those without any issue whatsoever. But it's the area that we weren't taught about where the fear is engendered. But I can tell you today that you don't, you don't really need to have any fear about these things. These are relatively not complicated investment vehicles. So the mutual fund is one of those not complicated investment vehicles. And you can do them with little, with little money, right? Here's an example. If you invest in stocks, you don't have the opportunity to really diversify as well as if you could in a mutual fund. Once you put your money down for a stock, you own that stock in that company. And your fortunes on that investment will rise or fall based on how well the company is doing in the particular market it's a part of, right? The industry that it's a part of. For example, if you were to be, if you were to say, I'm gonna take my check from the government, the uh, stimulus money, and I want to take $1,200 of my stimulus money and I want to buy all of the JetBlue airline stock that my $1,200 could afford to purchase. Now, true, JetBlue airline and United Airline and American Airline and all the rest of them, their current stock prices are really pretty low right now. It wasn't that way eight months ago, but it is now, right? Now, you could say to yourself, yeah, but Mr. Reed, you know, it's going to bounce back when the COVID-19 issue passes and people begin to travel and businessmen and women begin to travel again. Because as we all know, business travel is the bread and butter for all airlines, right? So I'm going to pump my money here. The problem with that is, and, and it's a good investment, it's a good way to look at it. The problem is, if this COVID-19 thing lasts a very long time, and let's say you bought your JetBlue stock at $25 per share, um, it could go down to 15 before you see it go back up to say 50. And that might not be a good place for you to invest your money. And you're not diversified. You don't have your money spread out in other areas throughout the economy, right? You just have your money in one pot. And we've all been taught by our parents, don't put all your eggs in where? One basket. So that's the individual stock approach. You can do it. I have no issue with you doing it. You have to be smart about it and informed. But um, 
The mutual fund approach gives you the opportunity to spread the risk, right? And guess what else? The fee, the broker fees you have to pay to buy individual stocks can be cost prohibitive at times. But if you allow yourself to, say, have an electronic transfer every month of, say, $50, right? come out of your account and go into your mutual fund account, some mutual funds will forego or lower management fees, right? Their fee, their initial fees to manage the, the fund, they'll forego those if you sign up for a constant $50 a month. They now know that 12 months out of the year, they're gonna get 50 bucks from you and 50 bucks a month from a whole lot of other people. And therein lies their ability to grow the fund and make money, right? So you could do it that way. You could invest in a mutual fund of your choosing. You can put away $50 a month through electronic transfers. You can reduce your, your cost of getting into the fund, right? Some funds do have a minimum, say, of $1,000 to even get started. But when you commit to $100 a month or $50 a month, and I've seen them as low as $25 a month, those fees can be reduced. So you can actually start your own mutual fund with very little money and have your risks spread out in the fund in a better way. Also, mutual funds uh, allow you to make all kinds of different kinds of transfers as well. Right? You can have your money invested in uh, a mutual fund that has part bonds or part stocks, right? So that way your, your money is not all tied up in one egg basket, right? So that's a good thing about that. And it's a much more, much more efficient way of investing your money. Right? If you don't have all your eggs in one basket with one particular stock like JetBlue Airlines, but you have your money in a fund, every dollar you put in the fund may be dispersed amongst other types of stocks and bonds in that fund. That's a good thing for you. So let's look at a few other things. Here are some other points I've come across over the years with people who want to invest but have a fear of investing. And these, these four or five points here are points that, oh, I should say considerations that people have that give them this fear because they don't really know. And they, they think they're going to maybe, they want to make money and they want to make a great big hit. Uh, that's, that's not what mutual fund investing is all about. This is not, repeat, this is not a get-rich-quick scheme. This is for the person who wants to ride this thing out for the long term, right? Point number one. Waiting to get a handle on the economy, that's why you don't invest. If you're going to wait around to get a handle, for you to get a handle on the economy, you could be waiting forever. The good thing about investing in a mutual fund and investing on a consistent basis, say monthly or every two weeks when you get paid or every week when you get paid out of your paycheck, is that you're in the game, but you're not overexposed being in the game from a financial standpoint. Trying the best, trying to buy the best performing fund, you know, trying to time it in a certain way. Ah, I'm going to buy the best fund that's performing the best. So let's talk about that for a moment. Even the best performing funds, even the best performing stocks within the funds have their bad days and their bad periods. For example, a year ago, you could have been invested in a mutual fund that had airline stock in it. Where would those, where, I mean, where would that, where, how would you feel now, a year later, knowing that you had money invested in a mutual fund that had a significant piece of its asset base invested in stocks from an airline? You'd probably be a little pissed off, <laughs> right? You'd be a little teed off a little bit, right? Right about now. But here's the good thing. Even if that's the case, the beauty of it is that that fund probably has stocks in it that are unrelated to the airline industry. Therefore you're, therefore, you're not really losing your shirt, right? So that's a good thing. It's a good thing. Also, since you're purchasing on a month-to-month, week, maybe week-to-week, every two-week basis, you're also buying the shares in the airline industry, assuming you stay with the fund, right? You're also buying the, the funds, you're buying into the fund that's purchasing shares in the airline industry 
at bargain basement prices. And you're absolutely right. It's better to be in the fund that purchases the airline industry stocks at bargain basement prices than for you as an individual to put your stimulus check into one airline, stock of one airline, trying to make a big hit. It's better that way. Why is it better that way? Because inside the fund with the airline stocks are stocks from other companies and other industries that are doing well in the economy. So that means your money is doing well. A piece of it is doing well. And when the airline industry does bounce back, the appreciation value in these stocks that are in that fund that are related to the airline industry, they will increase and thereby the value of the fund will increase. And guess what? The value of your investment will increase. So it's a good thing. It's a, it's a smarter, more efficient thing. So trying to get a handle on the economy, waiting for it to come around, then you'll invest. It's really not the smart money play. Get in the game now. Buy on a consistent basis every 30 days, every month. Get stuff at a bargain basement price for yourself at that time. Go shares, right? And it'll work for you later on. Mutual funds, it really is about long-term investing. Not short-term waiting for the quick hit. Trying to buy the best performing funds. We just covered that a bit, right? Trying to buy the best performing funds. In other words, you're trying to time it in a certain kind of way where when you get in, all of a sudden, bam, and you would have made a great hit. Uh, I, not many people are very good at timing the market. I guarantee you that if you go online and you read the, re the annual report of Warren Buffett for the company he has, Berkshire Hathaway, he always makes a part of his annual report. He makes a part of his annual report, a report on the misses he made in the previous year. Read those. If Warren Buffett is willing to go public with the misses that he and his partner made, right, in investing their investors' money, I think that's a good thing. It's honest, it's humbling, and it's honest. Even Warren Buffett, the second wealthiest man in America or the world, whatever they call him, right? even he makes some eh, not-so-smart choices. Waiting for an ideal buying opportunity. So that means you're going to wait until the stock prices are, are just right, and then you'll buy. Again, because you're waiting, you're missing, right? Mutual fund investing is a long-term investment prospect. Get in now and hang in there, and you'll be better for it financially. Waiting around for the great buying opportunity, who knows when that's going to be or how long that's going to be. And while you're waiting, you're not earning anything, right? And I, for, I for one, I try to read everything that uh, Warren Buffett talks about or whatever he puts in print. I try to keep up with it. So again, if he's willing to be very honest and open about the misses he's made and he's willing to explain those misses to his investors, um, I think that's a, that's a good thing. And you just simply can't, if you cannot time the market. You cannot wait for an ideal opportunity to buy. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, in FedCap land, the best time to buy when you're looking at mutual funds is right now. It's right now is always the best time. Not next week, not next month, not next year. Right now is always the best time. And as I said, when we first opened, Right? You don't need a lot of money. What you need is just a little courage, a little heart to jump in and start swimming, right? With the rest of us who do invest in the market every day. Let's talk about obsessing over your funds. In other words, you go online every single day, three, four, five, six times a day, just worrying about the ups and downs, the ups and downs uh, in the market. And how is that affecting your mutual fund? Oh my God, I have automobile uh, shares in, my, in the mutual fund, right? I, I have money invested in a mutual fund that has shares. It owns shares in the auto industry. Oh my God, I have money invested in a mutual fund, and in that fund, there are shares uh, of the airline industry. Oh, uh, 
oh my God, I, I have money in my mutual fund that has uh, shares in, in gun manufacturing, what have you, right? Listen, these things are normal for mutual funds to invest in, right? And the beauty of a mutual fund is that it's a big pool of money with a bunch of people who own shares in that a mutual fund, and the risk is spread out amongst all of you, right? Obsessing over your mutual fund, looking at, did it go up two pennies today in value? Did it drop three pennies today in value? Is an absolute waste of your time. And let me tell you why it's a waste of your time. Since you followed my advice and you are purchasing on a regular basis every month or every two weeks when you get paid, right? Since you're purchasing shares that way, you're always in the game. And whatever the share price of a particular stock is, that's, it is what it is. And since you own shares in the fund, not necessarily, you don't own the stocks in the fund, you own shares in the fund, that's a good thing in and of itself. You don't have to worry about, well, you know, this particular individual stock went down three pennies or three points, or this one went up three pennies, three points. You don't have to worry about that. Why? The purpose of investing in a mutual fund is so you don't have to necessarily worry about that. Because as I said when I began my open, if you have all your money in JetBlue stock, uh, yeah, you need to worry. Because right now, during COVID-19, the travel industry, which is cars, rental cars, buses, trains, airplanes, and cruise lines. Those individual companies, types of companies and inside the entire industry of travel, entertainment, boy, are their stocks getting hammered right now, right? One day, maybe 2021 or 2022, things will be back to normal, maybe. And if they are, then those companies will begin to come back. However, it was just announced on the news the other day that one of the major cruise lines is about to file for bankruptcy. Now imagine that. That's how bad it is out there right now for the travel slash entertainment industry. You can't even go to a concert, right? So that's not a good thing if you happen to be a person that owns shares in that particular cruise line and only that, and you don't have any money in your mutual fund. But I'm willing to put money in a mutual fund, my money in a mutual fund that has shares of cruise lines, airlines, trains, rental car companies in it. Still, as long as in the mutual fund, I have tech stocks, stocks in health corporations, stocks that um, are related to the biotechnical research and development industry. I would put my money in a fund that had that kind of mixture and not worry about the part of the fund that had the travel entertainment industry component in it. Because guess what? That may be going down and those share values may be going down, but I have money invested also by way of the mutual fund in the other ones I just named. That's going this way. So I'm good. And that's what we want. That's what we want for you here at FedCap, right? We want you to begin to understand how to be good when it comes to investing your hard-earned money. But you must get over the fear. You must conquer the fear of investing simply because you don't feel you know enough. You can do your own research online, right? You can call and ask questions. You can send me an email at kreed, that's kreed, R-E-I-D, at fedcap.org, and I'll be more than happy to answer any email question that you have about how to get over or how to conquer the fear you may possess in investing your hard-earned money. So ladies and gentlemen of FedCap Lab, that's it for today on Financial Friday. Again, I'm Keith Reed, the Supervisor for Work Readiness Instruction here at our We Care office, Bronx Grand Concourse. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all when you do return back to our classrooms. But in the meantime, stay safe, be safe, and be happy. Thank you very much.